Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fox Weather. This is America's Weather Tonight. I'm Bridget Mahoney. Let's jump right in and let's get to that forecast. As we head into the evening hours, some areas showing some drying conditions. Elsewhere, we are seeing that strong cold front come through the country, and that is going to spark the potential of scattered showers and storms. Through the early half of today, we saw storms roll through Wisconsin. That made headlines with the potential of tornado tornadoes, but as this pulls off to the east. Overall, the rain increasing for areas like the Mid-Atlantic, the southeast, as well as up through the east coast into your uh, Wednesday night, early portion of your Thursday. Atlanta, 49 degrees, 34 in Chicago. Look at Bismarck. 35 degrees. It's going to be breezy there. That's as we see that frontal system now off to the east of many areas. This is where we likely are going to see freeze watches and warnings in effect as temperatures drop close to freezing through the northern tier of the country. Also back out to the west, Denver, not too bad. 43 degrees, Albuquerque 47. We have clearing skies to the west, including Seattle. An overnight low of 49. We continue to see warm temperatures during the daytime hours for areas off off to the west, San Francisco 53 and LA 63 as well. Of course, the big story over the last several weeks has been Hurricane Ian. And after Hurricane Ian knocked out power to large portions of Florida, reports of fires have been increasing for homes as well as businesses. Fox Weather's Will Nunley was in Cape Coral with information on how to prevent these fires when the power goes out. The rush to restore power here has happened very quickly, but that's brought its own set of circumstances. And what I mean by that is an increase in the amount of structure fires that are being reported here around the Fort Myers area. Here in Cape Coral, the fire chief says they have responded to 100% more house fires and structure fires than they typically do uh, on an average weekday. And a lot of that is being sparked by uh, appliances that were left on in people's homes, maybe when they evacuated and they were left on. And then as the power was reconnected, that caused additional fires to happen. And so he's encouraging everybody in these circumstances to remember to turn off your main breakers uh, before you leave for any type of evacuation because it can help prevent these types of fires after you've left your home and again the power is reconnected. Meanwhile, he says their fire department continues an emergency response 24 hours a day with a very heavy load of calls. Here's how he describes it. Uh, this is the largest disaster the city of Cape Coral has ever experienced in our history. So it is certainly a, a pivotal moment, uh, but I believe we'll come out stronger together as a community. Um, you know, we survived the hurricane, but we don't, don't want to die in the recovery process. So make sure we're very smart in that process and uh, we, we don't strain our already uh, very fragile emergency system. But the fire chief tells me that the calls are beginning to subside a little bit, but he wants everybody watching really regardless of where you live to remember that safety tip of turning off your main breaker at your house. If you're ever forced to evacuate for an emergency because it could prevent you from coming home to yet another disaster in an unforeseen circumstance. That's the latest here from Cape Coral, Florida. Bridget, back to you. And as Will just showed us, residents of Florida are picking up the pieces and really recovering what's left of their belongings after the devastation of Hurricane Ian and many are dealing with the lack of flood insurance. Fox Weather meteorologist Ian Oliver spoke with attorney and author Andrew Lieb to break down the next steps. Flood insurance claims they can be a little bit more tricky to file. Why exactly is that and how does it work? Well, so they're very difficult to file and they're very aggravating once you get them even because what you're going to find is that with flood insurance, if you're getting the government program from the NFIP, you're capped at $250,000. And you're going to find that many houses in the Fort Myer area that need this the most, that's not going to do much for them. So it's not only aggravating and a difficult process to prove and to show you should get it, but the reward itself isn't what you're going to expect at the end of the day either. It's a frustrating situation. And the question becomes, did the flood happen because your roof ripped off and that was a wind issue, not a flood issue? Or did it come from a surge, as you mentioned before, and that's a flood issue? And then the question becomes, did you have the appropriate insurance to deal with it? But what I would tell people is that's a legal question. What you need to do is make your claims as soon as possible document, 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 take pictures of everything and try again to mitigate as many things as you can. What about with FEMA stepping in to help? This is separate from homeowners insurance and uh, the nationally sponsored flood insurance? 
Well, FEMA operates the national flood insurance, so they go together on that. And FEMA does have additional benefits that they're trying to do. But let's walk back for a second, because I did tell you that the NFIP, that national flood insurance program, that's operated by a subsidiary of FEMA, they're capped at 250. But you may have private flood insurance that goes beyond that. Don't think that one policy, one thing you're paying for is the end of the day. Keep searching and looking for more policies. Oftentimes, we have endorsements and additions to policies, and we have to fight for all of our rights. This is, again, just the beginning of all this, and we hope with red tape involved that folks that have been impacted by the storm can be made whole or as close to whole as possible as quickly as possible. So, Andrew Lieb, thank you very much for the insight here on Fox Weather. It's such a pleasure, and I just hope that people recover from this devastating storm. Yeah, a lot on the to-do list, but maybe you can add something else to the to-do list. Fall in full effect and take a look at some of this gorgeous fall foliage that's hitting part of the country, bringing out beautiful fall colors. And you can see that from Eli Bray out in Roan Mountain, Tennessee picturesque rolling hills, really bright. And of course, those bright sunny days helps amplify some of this viewing. And with endless options to view Mother Nature's work of art this fall, timing is everything. And leaf peepers, they want to catch the colors at just the right moment at their peak. Fox Weather's Amy Freeze and Craig Herrera spoke with founder and owner of the Foliage Report, Kyle Kotner, and he, and he explained how to get the best viewing. How do you get all this information to put into this report that you put out? It, it, it can be, to be honest with you, it can be exhausting, uh, but I pull in, I'm a data guy at the end of the day. So I pull in resources from over 50 sources. Uh, a lot of states will put out data, their Department of Natural Resources will put out data. But I also have uh, a bunch of uh, folks around the country who send me in information as well. Because at the end of the day, I want to make the most accurate information uh, shown on these maps as possible. So what I do is I get all this information together, I aggregate it, and I put it into easy viewable maps. We track uh, fall foliage change from all uh, U.S. states except for Hawaii. So from Alaska, the tundra that changes in uh, August all the way down to the uh, swamps in central Florida, which uh, changes around uh, in the midpoint of December. So yeah, this is why we're here. Born, born in D.C., <laughs> I love it. What's your favorite place to view the leaves? You know, that, that's a tough question, actually. <laughs> um, so obviously, a lot of folks, they love Vermont. They love the White Mountains of Vermont or even New Hampshire, uh, the Northeast Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Or even, hey, we can go to Colorado or yeah. Minnesota with Colorado with their wonderful golden aspen trees. Uh, but for me, um, I have a personal favorite, and that's the Shenandoah Mountains Ooh. out in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, it, it, probably because when I lived in D.C., I'd go out there every single fall. So I have a really special place in my heart for that area. Who doesn't love some fall colors? We do want to get to something else. Check this out. This is great video sent in uh, from Alberta. You can see a fireball streaking across the sky in Alberta, Canada. I was just there, in fact. I didn't get to see this, though. Lots of folks saw this meteor and shared videos online. And a fun little fact here, if you ever spot one of these in the sky, the color can actually tell you a clue about what the meteor is made of. This one is greenish, if you can look closely there, which actually suggests it might be made of magnesium. And next, check this out. This poor little gator injured in Anna Maria, Florida. You can see that there. That's an ongoing rescue. He was captured and put into rehab, but you can see the spin move. It's actually called a death roll, a technical name there. And alligators and crocodiles do it instinctually. The move is usually to kill prey, but it actually can be defensive as well. What it was here, of course. Of course, this was taken in. This man was taken in and will be released as soon as he heals up. Another video for you, a kayaker in Australia was attached attached his GoPro camera to a fishing line and he got a big surprise when he watched back this footage. Check this out. Andrew Burnell discovered a small great white shark keeping him company for about 10 minutes. Burnell saying that he felt really lucky about the experience because he didn't have any dramatic run in here. It didn't scare him actually and he said he couldn't go out again and get 
in the water. Kind of surprising after an incident like that, but cool to see some of the footage. Let's actually now check out what the country is going to see into your Thursday. So tomorrow, here's a look at the forecast. What you'll notice through the West, like Bismarck down through KC, temperature significantly cooler than what we've seen since this past weekend. KC 66, plenty of sunshine, Chicago 52, but we're tracking that big, well advertised cold front that's rolling off to the east. This is going to bring soggy conditions for areas like New York City, 70 degrees, ongoing rain showers. Meanwhile, Atlanta is dry at this point, 76 degrees. New Orleans, a few thunderstorms in the mix there, 85. Back out to the south from there, southwest Florida, we're watching some of those daily doses of rain and the potential of scattered showers and thunderstorms. That could, of course, impact the ongoing uh, recovery efforts through Ian because of Hurricane Ian from a couple of weeks ago, which is ongoing there. Back out to the west, LA 75, drier conditions. We saw some of those isolated thunderstorms early this morning up through San Francisco, 61 degrees in Seattle, 75. Meanwhile, Denver, 66 degrees in Dallas, 84 degrees. And that's going to do it for us here. For your latest forecast, download the Fox Weather app and watch us on on all of your favorite connected TV devices. I'm Bridget Mahoney. We'll see you next time. Fox Weather is Hurricane HQ. This will be one of the worst storms to hit the coast of Florida. America's weather team is prepared to keep you prepared. The storm is actually growing in size. Braving the elements so you don't have to. I can't believe how devastating this is, and I've seen a lot. This season, you need America's weather team. Precise, personal, powerful. For every critical moment, stay with Hurricane HQ. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.